All right, I've got a hot take for y'all today, all right? Real hot take. Listen up. I think Georgia's wide receiver room could be as deep as it's ever been next year. In fact, I think it could be one of the best wide receiver rooms across college football next fall. Now, I know that sounds crazy because Georgia has, I think, seven wide receivers who are not going to be with the program next year that played last year. Of course, Lad McConkey, Marcus Orsme, Jack Saint, they're both going to the NFL entering the draft. But Jackson Meeks is a reserve wide receiver who entered the transfer portal. Uh, Yazid Haynes was a promising freshman who entered the transfer portal, along with Denylon Morset, C.J. Smith, and Mekhi Muse. So there's a lot of guys who said, you know what? I got to go somewhere else. I want to play more. I want to make more of an impact. I got to go. But Georgia's still got a lot of weapons at wide receiver. I think it starts with Dylan Bell. 29 catches, 355 yards, two touchdowns last year, but yeah, dude's a weapon. You can line him up at receiver, uh, in the slot, in the backfield, at running back. I mean, he is one of the better athletes uh, on the roster, and I think he could be one of the best wide receivers in college football next year. If you just use your eyes, right? The stats aren't going to blow you away, but when you watch him play, He's tremendous. Uh, what he did against Georgia Tech, against Florida State, some of those catches he made on the sideline. I mean, the guy is a playmaker. He is tough to cover. Uh, he's an incredible route runner. Uh, one of the best route runners probably in the SEC and maybe across the country next year. He's got tremendous hands. He breaks tackles after the catch. Uh, runs really well. Runs with power. Uh, got plenty of muscle on him, but he's got great hands. And we saw him make a lot of plays against Tennessee as well. Dude's a playmaker, and I think he's going to have a great season next year. Now, I'm not saying he's going to catch 50, 60 passes for 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, um, and they don't need him to. They just need him to con continue making the plays that he made, especially down the stretch. He might be their best wide receiver next year. If it's not him, it could be Dom Lovett, right? Dom Lovett caught 54 passes, 613 yards, four touchdowns. He was a transfer from Missouri, and he made a big impact I assume he and Rob Rock Thomas, who I'm going to talk about in a second, will both be back. I think if they were going to enter the portal, they probably should have by now. Neither one has declared for the draft, and I think they both were eligible to. So I think Dom Lovett, uh, assuming he's coming back, right? He could be an easy number two. Um, he's great after the catch. He also showed uh, tremendous hands, the ability to make defenders miss down the field. He was a vertical threat. He can help you in the screen game. There's a lot to like about him. And I think uh, he could put up those same type of numbers, but reliable, dependable. He's an option that Carson Beck is going to look to time and time again next year. There's no doubt about it. Of course, Rod Rod Thomas, bigger guy, 6'2", 200 pounds, caught 23 passes last year, 383 yards and one touchdown. I believe that was against Kentucky when he just went up and Randy Moss. Uh, some poor defender, got that foot in bounds. One of the best catches any Georgia receiver had all year. When he was healthy and he was out on the field and the ball came his way, Ra Ra Thomas flashed. Um, I think he got better and better as the season went along. Had a big catch against Ole Miss to really start the game. And I think he got injured there and wasn't really the same the rest of the season. But he's a playmaker too. And he's a big bodied receiver who can win jump balls and um, can be a threat in the red zone. Again, he only had one touchdown, but those numbers could be better next year. He's a weapon, no doubt about it, and a solid number three. Then you've got the transfer guys coming in, right? Colby Young, 6'5", 215. That's your Lawrence Cager, right? Your Javon Wims, guy you can put on the outside and throw a, a jump ball to or a back shoulder ball down the sideline. A bigger body guy who can make those smaller defenders pay. He's a weapon. And he caught for Miami last year 47 passes, 563 yards, and five touchdowns. He's productive. He's got experience. He's a veteran. He knows how to make plays. He knows how to score touchdowns. He's another guy who can stretch the field and, you know, win those jump balls. But Miami used him in the screen game, too. And, you know, he kind of runs like a deer. He's quicker than I thought for a guy 6'5", 215. So you've got a big-bodied, sure-handed receiver out there. And he, he could be the number two receiver, three, four. You know, maybe he emerges as the number one receiver. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But I just rattled off four guys right there that most of college football would love to have. If Colby Young or Ra Ra Thomas is your number four wide receiver, that there already shows you how deep this group is. It's very good. Then you have Michael Jackson the third, right, from Southern Cal. He came to Georgia because he was told that he's going to play a lot and he's going to see the field. 
didn't exactly light up the stat sheet. I think he was banged up a little bit. Only 17 catches, 146 yards, and a touchdown. But when he's healthy, I've heard a lot of good things about him. He didn't come to Georgia to sit on the bench. I don't think he's as good as the guys I mentioned beforehand, but he's coming to play, and he's got some ability. He's got some talent, and at your number five, maybe, solid option. You got London Humphreys, right, from Vanderbilt, 6'3", 190, a guy with plenty of size who can run. Really good athlete, caught 22 passes for the Commodores last year as a freshman, excuse me, for 439 yards, four touchdowns. That's, that's production. That's a lot of production from a true freshman. Georgia loved him. Second he entered the portal, Georgia came knocking and said, hey, come on over here, man. We could use you. We could use a guy who can run like you at, again, 6'3", 190, uh, can catch passes. He's only going to get better. A crisp route runner. There's a lot to like about his game. And he's the sixth guy that I've mentioned. He would be a number one, two, or three for most programs across college football. Maybe not in the SEC, but... Kid can play. There's no doubt about it. And maybe he gets more playing time than I think. I'm not sure he's going to be playing over some of these veteran guys that have been here for a while. But when he's out there, he's an option. There's no doubt about it. The kid can make plays. And, again, he's got so many guys, I think, in front of him. I might be wrong. Maybe he impresses in the spring and kind of climbs up the depth chart. But at some point, we're going to see London Humphreys out there making plays. I think it's only just a matter of time. So he's got a lot of experience left. He's got several years of eligibility. So I think he's a guy who will play more and more as his career progresses. We got Anthony Evans, guy we saw a little bit last year, had uh, a receiving touchdown against Florida State, thrown by Gunnar Stockton, one of the fastest and most explosive players, not only on the roster, but across the SEC. This kid can fly, uh, took over the punt return uh, job, I guess, late in the season from Makai Muse, who is just wasn't dependable back there when he had the ball he was great but you gotta you gotta catch the punts and he muffed a few if Anthony Evans can be a consistent weapon back there in the return game he's gonna make a lot of plays but he's someone who can stretch the field and help in the screen game the short passing game I think we're gonna see more of him but again there's only so many receivers right some guys have to be on the bench and wait their turn maybe he's one of them but if that's your number seven guy this incredibly fast, explosive wide receiver um, with who's still growing and still learning the game. Um, he's only going to be better next year. That's that's a great number seven, man. I mean, this group is very, very deep. And I think he has the potential to be a, a game-changing wide receiver. And he's the seventh guy that I mentioned. Now, is there an alpha on this team? Is there a true number one go-to option, right? They had that in Brock Bowers. He's a tight end. I know he's a tight end right? But he was a pass catcher, right? And he was the alpha uh, in that wide receiver tight end room. If they needed a play, Carson was looking Brock Bowers' way. Um, and they needed him to be that alpha against Auburn. And maybe they need someone to emerge as that alpha on the road against Texas, on the road against Alabama, on the road against Kentucky or Ole Miss. But I don't think it's necessary because Carson Beck does a great job of distributing the ball. He's going to go where he needs to go with it, no matter who the guy is. If you're open, he's going to find you and get you the ball. If the ball is supposed to go here, he's going to look there first, but he also knows that I've got this guy over here as my second read. I got this guy down the field as my third option. So he doesn't need an alpha. It's nice to have one. It's great to have one, but I don't think it's 100% necessary, especially the way he distributes the ball. Because uh, it's going to go to the right place more often than not. But he's got weapons. There's no doubt about that. He doesn't have a Brock Bowers type. Uh, but he's got weapons. For sure. And he's got a lot of them. I don't know how many other programs out there can rattle off seven guys who have the potential to make big plays anytime the ball comes their way. And it might not be the most talented. And you know, maybe it is. I think that question is still out there to be determined. Um, but it's deep. And there's plenty of talent on uh, or in that wide receiver room. I think it's a great group. Uh, I can't remember the last time Georgia, in my opinion, has had seven deep at wide receiver where you can rotate guys just consistently. This year, I think they've got seven guys, and maybe more. Maybe Tyler Williams, um, who was a freshman last year, was the top wide receiver they took in that 23 class. Um, maybe he emerges. I think it's taken him a little more time from what I'm hearing behind the scenes. Uh, hasn't really developed, I guess, the way they want, but 
Maybe he takes a step in year two. Um, I think that's certainly possible. But overall, I think it's an outstanding wide receiver room. I think a lot of those guys are going to make a lot of plays in 2024. Thanks for watching. You can sign up to our free newsletter. That link is down below. We want to get you over on Dog Post to read everything we've got over there. We're still pumping out content. It is the offseason, but recruiting's right around the corner, baby. Let's go. That's where I shine. If you love recruiting, this is the channel to be on. Uh, so thanks for watching and head on over to Dog Post. You will not be disappointed.